Hi there, Bob Wormsley here from Insidium. On today's Top Tip Tuesday, we're going to be making this dynamic particle sim. We'll use Nexus Question to scale the particles. We'll then push them apart with Nexus Push, and then we'll keep them on the surface of our geometry by using the Collider Tag Attraction Force. So, let's get started. In our scene then we have this torus primitive and we have an XP emitter. We're going to emit particles on the polygon area of our torus and in the emission tab look we're doing a shot 10,000 particles with no speed. So if we hit play we've got our particles there on the surface of our torus. Now the effect we're going to do is we're going to animate the size of these particles uh, by animating their color so to do that we're actually going to use an x particles color modifier let's go to insidium x particles modifiers we want to control the xp color and what we're going to do is use a shader here so let's go into our shader we're going to use a max on noise here it is we can click on this to adjust this noise now what we want is we can you can do any noise you like but let's go with a we're going to use a Voronoi one here let's put this scale way up so it's massive and we're going to add a bit of clip and we want a bit of animation speed as well actually let's put that on say 0.2 if I right click on that and click animate we can see our noise animating in the thumbnail okay cool so now that we have that let's hit play and we should get yeah look we can see that noise animating let's just make the torus invisible so I want this to animate a bit more quickly actually let's put that on 0.7 yep that's better that's looking good and um, we could maybe crush that a little bit more so there's less white Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to set up a question and action system so that when these particles are white, they go big, and when they're black, they shrink back down. So let's go to Insidium, X Particles, Nexus, and we're going to do it with Nexus Question. And what we're going to say is, let's ask a question. We're going to say, if the particle, and we want to ask a, a question of the particle color, not the age. So let's change this to color. If the particle color, and we want to look at the color brightness, the black and white values, if the particle brightness is uh, less than 0.1, which is really dark, then we want to make them really small. So let's add an action. And we don't want to set the color, we want to set the radius, obviously. So let's put that on radius, and we're going to put it on zero. And what we want, we don't want it to happen immediately. We don't want it to snap to zero as soon as they get dark. We want it to kind of uh, gradually animate to zero. So to do that, we can just reduce this weight right down. So something like that. And then what we want to do is do a similar question, but now this is for, to get them to grow. So let's just hold control, duplicate that. And in this one, we're going to say if the color brightness is greater than say i don't know 0.7 so this is the light one when they're light we want to set the radius to whatever the amount is that we want so let's put it on maybe i don't know 26 for now so let's see if this system works yep so they're growing and then when they go black they're shrinking excellent now we can make some tweaks for this but that basic setup is working black particles shrink down i think we could get them to shrink down a bit more quickly actually let's go to our question let's go to our set radius for the dark ones and let's just put that up a bit the weight and then look yeah look so they're, sh they're shrinking down much more quickly so that is our basic question and action setup one thing we could do actually look at the beginning they're born with this radius value because that's what the emitters set and then they start having it controlled by the question if we go to our emitter emission tab and just switch off the birth radius now we won't get that flash and yeah they just grow up when they're white excellent so we're going to add some physics to this now so what we want these to do these are all if we just dolly in a bit as they scale up they're all just intersecting because they don't really care about each other at the moment so what we want to do is we want them to push each other apart so let's go to insidium x particles nexus and bring in a nexus push and let's put this on particle radius mode full strength and maybe 10 iterations so now as they grow up they're going to push each other apart yeah 
and then they're shrinking back down. So that's the basic physics. Here is the issue though, if we bring our torus in, because we are, they are pushing each other apart and they don't care about the torus, they're kind of leaving the surface and some of them will even be pe penetrating that surface. So let's go to our torus and put a tag extension and we want um, our insidium tags and we want to put a collider tag on there. All right, and in this collider tag, um, we're going to take off the bounce and just add a bit of friction. So now these particles are going to collide with that surface. They can't penetrate it, but because of that, they're being bounced off the surface when they scale up and they're leaving that surface. And that's obviously not what we want. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to use to ensure that these particles stay on the surface of this uh, torus. We're not actually going to use a follow geo uh, modifier because often with follow geo and push we've got kind of two opposing forces um, acting against each other and it's not going to work so well but what we can do is use a function within our collider tag so in here we're going to go to our forces tab and look we have forces of both attraction and repulsions this is going to repulse or attract particles away from the surface of this object so all we want is attraction let's put the radius quite big so they'll always be attracted so when a particle is within 100 centimeters of the surface it will be attracted to that surface let's put the attraction up to maybe 59 and let's just see what we get and yeah look immediately those particles are attracted to the surface but the push is pushing them apart but they're perfectly hugging that surface. That's looking really cool. And now we can just play around with the friction settings in our collider to get different looks. So if we have really strong friction, it's, it's much more difficult for the particles to be pushed and to slide around. But actually the sliding around on the surface look pretty cool. So what we could do is put our friction just down a little bit but then put loads of variation so some particles will freely be allowed to slide over this surface um, and others won't so you can mess around with these settings if we have very little uh, friction at all you can get some quite cool kind of slidey looks as those particles are um, uh, being pushed into each other and sliding across that surface so obviously you just sort that out until you've got the look that you like and what's nice about this is we have this realistic push dynamics with the particles not intersecting they're pushing each other around the surface of our object because of that object attraction um, and this uh, looks really nice in rendering effects because they're perfectly on the surface let's just demonstrate that quickly just with a viewport render um, if we activate this light Let's go to Insidium, X Particles, Generators. So let's just generate some geometry from these particles. We've got a generator. We'll just do it with a, let's do it with a platonic. Stick the platonic as a child of the generator. We need to tell the generator which emitter to use to make these objects. So let's drag in our XP emitter here. And we'll put this on uh, Render Instances. And then if we hit Play, now we're getting those um, platonics. And you can see that they are perfectly hugging the surface of that uh, 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 this torus, looking quite cool. We could actually uh, do with giving them a little bit of um, varied rotation, couldn't we? So let's go to extended data, physical data, sorry, general data, use rotation. And I'm just going to set this to random. And now all of those platonics are going to be slightly differently oriented and that's looking really cool and you can see that we've got perfect object particle alignment even though we've got those physics pushing them apart